An explosion erupts. The air blast shockwave tears through everything in its path. A brutal, unforgiving force that can obliterate cars and send debris flying. But here's the kicker. Even this devastating power can't break through a heavily armored vehicle. This is where the true weapons of destruction step in, wielding a terrifyingly clever trick. Anti-tank rockets don't just rely on brute force. They play the game smarter. When these rockets detonate, they unleash something extraordinary, something far deadlier than a shockwave. Imagine this, a hypersonic jet of destruction, screaming forward at speeds between 4,000 and 8,000 meters per second. It doesn't just hit armor, it slices through it like a scalpel, turning the thick walls of a tank into nothing more than butter before a hot knife. But how does this terrifying jet come to life? What counters it? And why is this very concept used in the deadliest weapons of all, nuclear bombs? The story begins in the blood-soaked trenches of World War I. Tanks, the unstoppable steel behemoths, rolled onto the battlefield, changing the game forever. But no weapon is invincible for long. Armies quickly scrambled to develop tools to pierce these armored beasts. At first, it was simple. High-powered rifles and anti-tank shells, relying purely on brute kinetic energy. But the tanks fought back, adding thicker and stronger armor. The response? Bigger, heavier anti-tank guns. This arms race spiraled into absurdity, with guns so massive they had to be towed like artillery. Infantry? Left in the dust. That's when the Soviets rewrote the rules of engagement. Enter the RPG-43, a handheld anti-tank grenade, compact enough for infantry to carry and deadly enough to threaten tanks. And let's clear something up. RPG doesn't mean rocket-propelled grenade. It stands for Ruchnaya Protivotankovaya Granata, meaning handheld anti-tank grenade launcher. Yet this grenade had one fatal flaw. Soldiers had to get dangerously close to a tank, close enough to kiss it goodbye, to land their throw. The battlefield demanded something more, range, power, and precision. Soviet ingenuity answered the call with the RPG-7, the most iconic rocket-propelled grenade launcher ever made. No more risky throws. Now soldiers could strike from a distance. But the secret to its lethality wasn't just its rocket. It was the technology behind its warhead. Ordinary grenades explode in all directions, spraying shrapnel like a tornado of death. Great against infantry. Useless against tanks. Tanks demanded precision. They demanded shaped charges. Inside the RPG-7's warhead lies the key, a cone-shaped metal liner surrounded by explosives. Upon impact, the detonation doesn't just create a blast, it compresses the metal liner into a focused jet of molten particles traveling at hypersonic speeds. This is no random force of destruction, it's surgical. It carves through tank armor with devastating precision. The result? The RPG-7 became a nightmare for armored vehicles a true predator on the battlefield. But even the most fearsome weapons have weaknesses. Fast forward to 2017, during the harrowing Battle of Marawi in the Philippines. Government forces, facing militants armed with outdated RPG-2s, faced a shocking problem. While these older weapons couldn't destroy modern tanks, they shredded lightly armored personnel carriers. The government troops improvised. They covered their vehicles with slats of wood and cardboard. These simple barriers created a gap between the RPG's detonation and the vehicle's armor, weakening the hypersonic jet before it could reach its target. This wasn't just survival. It was innovation born in the heat of battle. And this principle of premature detonation is why modern tanks are surrounded by metal cages to keep the destructive jet at bay. Enter explosive reactive armor. But wood and cardboard won't stop modern weapons. Tanks needed something tougher, something revolutionary. Explosive Reactive Armor, ERA. ERA is no ordinary defense. Each panel is a bomb waiting to explode, but not just any bomb. Inside these armor plates are insensitive explosives, immune to bullets, shrapnel, or even fire. But when hit by the shock wave of an anti-tank round, they explode outward, disrupting the hypersonic jet and adding precious distance between the tank and the threat. However, there's a catch. ERA works against older threats, but not modern ones. 
Weapons like the Javelin and the German PARS-3 come with tandem warheads. One charge to neutralize the ERA and another to deliver the killing blow. The balance was shifting yet again. The death of the tank? Here's the harsh reality. Tanks are losing ground. A modern tank costs five to ten million dollars to build, with active protection systems adding another one to two million dollars. But an infantry-carried Javelin missile costs less than two hundred thousand dollars, and it's devastatingly effective. Modern missiles don't just hit tanks, they exploit their vulnerabilities. They strike from above, targeting the thinner armor on the roof. They overwhelm reactive armor. They hunt in packs, making even advanced defense systems struggle to cope. The battlefield is at a crossroads. Active protection systems, smart defenses that intercept incoming threats, offer hope. But they are costly and not foolproof. Infantry weapons are cheaper, deadlier, and evolving faster. The future of war tanks were once the kings of the battlefield, rolling fortresses of unstoppable might. But the tide is turning. Anti-tank weapons have evolved into precision tools of destruction, leveling the playing field and shifting the balance of power toward infantry. Is this the end of the tank era? Or will tanks adapt, rising again to reclaim their dominance? The answer will shape the future of warfare a brutal, unrelenting game of fire, steel, and innovation. As the threat of advanced anti-tank weapons grows, militaries are turning to active protection systems, APS, as the next line of defense. These systems detect incoming missiles and rockets using radar or optical sensors and neutralize them mid-air with explosive countermeasures or kinetic interceptors. Systems like Israel's Trophy and Russia's Arena have shown promise on the battlefield demonstrating their ability to shield armored vehicles from even the deadliest threats. However, APS is not without challenges. High costs, technological limitations, and the inability to counter saturation attacks, where multiple projectiles overwhelm the system, highlight its vulnerabilities. For nations with limited budgets, the reliance on such expensive systems raises a critical question. Is the investment worth it? The dynamic between tanks and infantry has always been a tug of war. Where once tanks ruled with impunity, today's infantry, armed with lightweight and highly effective anti-tank systems, have gained the upper hand. Portable weapons like the Javelin, NLAW, and RPG-7 enable a single soldier to neutralize multi-million dollar tanks. This shift has profound implications for modern warfare. Large-scale tank formations, once the cornerstone of military strategy, now face the threat of obsolescence. Instead, smaller, more mobile units, equipped with precision weapons and backed by drones, are redefining the rules of engagement. Drones have entered the battlefield as a game-changer, complementing infantry and replacing some traditional tank roles. Armed with anti-tank munitions or equipped for reconnaissance, drones provide a bird's-eye view of the battlefield, allowing infantry to pinpoint and strike armored targets with pinpoint accuracy. Take the Bayraktar TB2, for example. This Turkish-made drone has been instrumental in conflicts like the Nagorno-Karabakh War, where it devastated Armenian armored columns. With drones proliferating rapidly, even low-budget militaries now have access to capabilities that were once reserved for superpowers. The tank isn't dead yet, but it must evolve. The future of tank warfare likely lies in stealth technologies, autonomous systems, and advanced materials. Tanks may adopt lighter, more flexible designs with modular armor systems that can be adapted to counter emerging threats. Moreover, the integration of AI could revolutionize tank operations. Autonomous vehicles could scout dangerous areas, identify threats, and engage targets without endangering human crews. Advanced sensors and drone support could also enhance situational awareness, reducing the likelihood of ambushes by infantry or drones. The tank, once the undisputed king of the battlefield, now stands at a crossroads. Faced with evolving threats, it must adapt or risk irrelevance. The next generation of warfare will not only test the limits of technology, but also the ingenuity of those who wield it. As tanks grapple with their future, one thing remains certain, 
the battlefield will always evolve, driven by the relentless arms race between offense and defense. Whether tanks rise to meet the challenge or bow out of the spotlight, they will forever remain a symbol of war's brutal, unyielding march forward. Thanks for watching and see you soon for a new topic. Do not forget to hit that subscription button to help us grow. Bye bye.